Hi, everybody. It's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com, and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about the Ross procedure. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Christopher Burke, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at UW Medicine Heart Institute in Seattle, Washington. During his fantastic career, Dr. Burke has performed over 1,500 cardiac procedures in which more than 1,000 involved some form of valve repair or valve replacement. Dr. Burke, it is wonderful to have you here today with us. Well, thank you, Adam. It is great to be here. Yeah, so we're going to be talking all about the Ross procedure, but first, I have a question about you. Why did you want to become a cardiac surgeon? Well, in many ways, um, I stumbled into the field a little bit. Uh, so I was in medical school, and I did a rotation on the thoracic surgical service, actually, doing lung and esophageal surgery, and very much fell in love with the anatomy and the procedures, um, met some fabulous mentors, and from there, did a rotation in cardiac surgery, and almost immediately fell in love with the specialty, and uh, the amazing impact on patients' lives and the ability to re restore function in the heart, um, the challenging nature of the procedures, the functioning in a team environment. I mean, all those things came together and, uh, you know, I knew it was a perfect fit and uh, I was very much motivated to, to dedicate my life's work to this. So Dr. Burke, there are a lot of things that you could focus on in cardiac surgery but you chose a path all about valves. Why is that? Well, Adam, that related a bit to when I was in training here at the University of Washington and was in discussions to stay on as faculty. Um, I saw that there was an opportunity here uh, to help build the thoracic aortic program and the aortic valve program. And that very much aligned with my clinical interests. Um, and I was <clears throat> very fortunate enough to uh, be able to train uh, after my residency training out at the University of Pennsylvania with Joe Bavaria and did his thoracic aortic super fellowship out there. Came back and um, from there things have really taken off. And so I treat all aspects of thoracic aortic disease, aneurysms, dissections, and aortic valvular disease, including uh, aortic valvular repairs and ROS procedures. And it's become my clinical and research passion and uh, is pretty much almost exclusively what I do clinically now. Dr. Burke, you just mentioned the ROS procedure has become one of your specialties. I'm curious to know what attracted you to that two valve procedure? It really started when I was just observing what was happening you know, with my patients and other patients around me. And I really started to appreciate the cost that patients um, would incur following a conventional valve replacement, especially in young patients, be it blood thinners, reoperations, um, infections, what have you. And especially in the era of TAVR, where more and more and more younger patients have been getting bioprosthetic valves. I've just seen patient after patient who's only a few years out from their original surgery sitting in a cardiac surgeon's office again, you know, in dismay over the prospect of having another surgery. And I really thought to myself, there has to be a better way that we can do this. And, and we must have some sort of innovation that can improve on this. And that coincided uh, with actually quite a bit of data coming out um, showing the Ross procedure in adults was both very durable and very safe. And so it was really a combination of those two things that um, led to me saying, this is something we need to offer at the University of Washington. Dr. Burke, I love how you contextualize the costs for patients who have a need for a reoperation for an aortic valve replacement. And I love how you touched on the Ross procedure as a potential long-term fix for that patient. I'm sure there are people watching this video who have never heard of a Ross procedure before. Can you explain for patients what it is? The Ross procedure involves moving the patient's own pulmonary valve 
over into the aortic position. After we do that, we actually reconstruct the pulmonary valve with typically a cadaver or a human pulmonary valve. Um, so the patient's left with two biologic uh, valves, both on the left side or aortic side, um, which we sometimes call the autograft or the pulmonary autograft, and then on the right side, which is the pulmonary homograft. Dr. Burke, can you share with the patients what are the advantages of this two-valve procedure? There's, there's multiple advantages, Adam. Pulmonary autograft serves as an excellent substrate uh, for a neoaortic valve. So there's no need for blood thinners long-term. Ross procedure is very resistant to infection. Most importantly, patients with a Ross procedure tend to live the longest. And there's some suggestion they maybe live as long or close to their sort of aged matched peers who don't have aortic valvular disease. And I think in young patients, that is of crucial importance. Dr. Burke, you may know this, but given all those advantages, I went ahead and I selected a Ross procedure for myself all the way back in 2005. So I've realized those benefits, but at the same time, I understand that the Ross procedure may be also dismissed by some physicians out there. Um, can you talk about that? Well, it's a hard operation. So Adam, a uh, conventional aortic valve replacement, um, certainly by cardiac surgical standards, is a fairly straightforward operation. Um, and it's, it's within the armamentarium of really any practicing cardiac surgeon. Um, a Ross procedure is a significant um, step up from, from a technical complexity standpoint. Um, you know, it requires a full root replacement um, in most circumstances, you know, and, and prior to that, you know, a safe harvest of the pulmonary autograft, which has, you know, potential pitfalls. Um, the, the pulmonary valve needs to be reconstructed. So it's many, many more operative steps. It's a longer procedure. Um, there is more opportunity for things to go wrong. Um, and that gets into the critical importance of being at a center that has experience with the Ross, um, is dedicated and committed to it. Uh, it, it does them in a high volume. So Dr. Burke, you just mentioned the importance of experience and safety for patients having a Ross procedure. I understand that at UW Medicine Heart Institute, you have been a key figure in the launch of a Ross procedure program. Is that correct? And if so, can, can you share with our patients what, what has happened with the launch and the growth of that program? We launched an adult Ross, Ross program here at the University of Washington uh, about two years ago now. Um, I, I partnered up with one of our surgeons at Seattle Children's um, who had had some experience. And we were very selective early on. Um, and I made sure that we had an institutional commitment to it, that I had commitment from my colleagues, both on the surgical side, on the cardiology side, um, and on the entire treatment team. I mean, this, this, it's important to realize this is not just simply a surgeon you know, performing the procedure. There's a whole team and program aspect that has to go in. Um, and we weren't gonna do it if we were 50% and we had to be fully committed. Uh, we came up with a protocol for how we would execute the operations and what the personnel would be needed for these operations to maximize results. Because I knew that a microscope would be on us and I knew the importance of volume and experience. Um, and we set all the pieces in play and, and now we've, we're building a program where this year we'll do between 20 or 30 Ross procedures, um, in this calendar year. So we're very excited about that. Dr. Burke, on behalf of all the patients out there who are benefiting from your commitment and the commitment of your team there at UW Heart Institute for the Ross procedure, I can't thank you enough. And it's interesting because I've noticed, I would say within the last three years or so, the number of emails I get in my inbox from patients, from parents about the Ross procedure has skyrocketed. 
And I'm just curious to know, is there a new appreciation for the Ross procedure? Absolutely, Adam. Um, and we've seen a similar trend here. Uh, I think there's a variety of reasons for that. You know, patients are very savvy now. Um, and there's many, many resources available. Patients do their research. Heartvalvesurgery.com, you know, is certainly included in that category. And, you know, word travels and word gets out. Um, and I think that has been um, combined with, with the phenomenon that we're seeing and, and appreciating that, you know, conventional valve replacement is maybe not such a great option in certain younger patient populations, um, along with really good data from many, many different centers from around the world showing this to be a very safe, very effective procedure. And so I think there's, it's, it's both on the sort of surgeon and, and cardiology aspect, along with on the patient you know, side of things and doing their own due diligence and research um, and seeking out high volume programs. Dr. Burke, I heard you reference that the Ross procedure might be suited for younger people, but I'm curious to know, is there some form of upper age limit where the Ross procedure might not be applicable? Yeah, that's a great question, Adam. So in my practice, uh, patients with non-repairable aortic valve pathology who are really under 60 years old, um, a ROS is very much a first or frontline therapy. So I would say anybody under 60 um, who has, who is otherwise in reasonable health. For me personally, 60 to 65 comes into a case by case basis. Um, I use age more as a surrogate for sort of expected life expectancy. Um, and I want to see about 25 years or so, much less than that. If a patient has many comorbidities or is over 65, you're, you're probably not deriving the full benefit of the Ross procedure. And I think at that point, we would think a little bit more seriously about a bioprosthetic valve or even a TAVR in certain circumstances in those patients. Dr. Burke, while I have you here, I have to ask you the big question that I'm sure a lot of patients are wondering, which is what is your number one piece of advice for a patient or a parent who might be considering the Ross procedure? Do your research. You know, we want to buy a car uh, without going online, doing research, talking to people who had bought similar cars or, or whatever. And I think the same thing is true here. Um, we know the importance, um, especially for something like a Ross procedure. Uh, this is a technically demanding procedure. Um, and you know, the surgeon and programmatic volume does count. Um, it does have an impact. And so I think seek high volume programs, make sure you are comfortable with your surgeon um, and, and, you know, as a patient, make sure you're comfortable with the environment that you're in, um, because ultimately I think that has a huge influence on outcomes as well. Dr. Burke, fantastic advice. And on that note, I want to extend a huge thank you for taking time away from your very busy practice there at UW Medicine Heart Institute in Seattle, Washington, to educate our patients about the Ross procedure. Well, thank you, Adam. Thank you for all you do for our patients in the community, and it's been fun. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.